Before you proceed to the examples, please review the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem is used to determine probabilities whenever you are looking at samples and the mean of the sample. Okay. So to be able to use the central limit theorem though, there a few things have to happen. Um, one is you know, regardless of what the original the population distribution looks like, n has to be greater than 30. Okay. Now it doesn't always have to be greater than 30 if it is already normally distributed. You can also use it. Okay, so the two things you're looking for are sample size greater than 30 and normally distributed. Okay, so let's look at some examples so you can see how this works. Um, so the number of hours spent playing video games by the residents of Minneapolis have a mean of 10 hours and a standard deviation of 3. Find the probability that if you select 42 random people, the mean number of hours a week spent playing video games is between 9 and 15. Okay, so first of all, it doesn't say that this is normally distributed, but it does say that the sample is greater than 30. So n is equal to 42, which is greater than 30, so we can use the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem says that because n is greater, oh, that's supposed to be a 30, since n is greater than 30, then the distribution of the sample means is going to be normally distributed. And because it's normally distributed, that means we can easily find some probabilities using normal distribution. Okay, so um, before we can do that, we need to determine what the mean of the sample means is and what the standard deviation, also known as the standard error of the means, is. Okay, well, first of all, the mean of the sample means is just going to be the mean of the population, so that's pretty easy. However, the standard deviation of the sample means, also known as the standard error of the mean, um, we're going to have to do a little bit of work for it is going to be the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay. So the standard deviation was 3 and the sample size is 42. Okay. So let's just put this in our calculator. It's approximately 0.463. Okay, now that we have this information, we can find the probability. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a distribution of the sample means that is normally distributed. Okay, x bar, uh, mu of x bar is in here, and it is um, equal to 10. Sigma x bar is approximately 0.463. And what we're looking for is between 9 and 15. And this is a rough sketch. We're looking for this area in here. Well, to find that, all we have to do is use the normal CDF function. Okay, so we're going to do second bars down to normal CDF. And the way you use the normal CDF function is you put the lower bound, the upper bound, the mean, and the standard deviation. So 9, 15, the mean was 10. Now be careful here, the standard deviation is not 3. The standard deviation of the original population is 3, but we need to put the standard deviation of the sample means. So we need to put in this 0.463. Now if you want to remove some of the, um, the rounding error, you could just put 3 divided by the square root of 42 in there, and that will give you the exact answer. So the probability is approximately 0.985. Approximate. Let's use the approximate symbol. Okay. Let's try the next one. 
The average price of a computer is $789 with a standard deviation of $48. Find the probability that if 27 computers are selected, their mean price is less than $650. Okay, so to be able to use the standard, um, the central limit theorem, one of two things has to happen. It has to be normally distributed, which it doesn't say it is, or your sample size has to be greater than 30. Well, our sample size is equal to 27, which is oops, less than 30. So we cannot use the central limit theorem for this one. So let's try the next one. A retail store's daily sales are normally distributed with a mean of $3,000 and a standard deviation of 500. Find the probability that if you randomly select a day, its sales are greater than 3,120. Now we're just looking at a single day here, so we don't even need to use the central limit theorem for this. And it does say that this is normally distributed. So what we have here is a normal distribution Notice here I'm writing x because we we're talking about individual days. On the graph up here I used x bar because we were talking about sample means. Okay. So uh, the mean is $3,000 and sigma is 500. So what we're looking for is 3,120 and we're looking for greater than that. Okay. So, to find the probability that x, okay, we're talking about x here, because we're talking about an individual um, day, an individual day's sale, is greater than 3,120, you can use the normal CDF function again. So, normal CDF, so it's 2. The lower bound in this case is 3,120. The upper bound is positive infinity, and the way we can represent positive infinity in the calculator is doing 1 times 10 to the 99th power. So we do second e and then 99. Then we put the mean, which is 3000. And then we put the standard deviation, which is 500. So it's point four zero five. Okay. All right. Well, this time we want to know if you randomly select 13 days that their mean daily sales are greater than 3,120. Okay. So we're talking about the probability of a bunch of days. So a group of things. Okay. Now the central limit theorem to be used, one of two things needs to happen. N needs to be greater than 30, but n in this case is equal to 13. So it is less than 30, but we can use the central limit theorem because it is normally distributed. Okay, so the other thing that has to happen is it's normally distributed. So because it is, we can use this. We want to know the probability that x bar in this case is greater than 3120. Okay, now to use the normal CDF function, we need the lower bound, the upper bound, the mean, and the standard deviation. The lower bound and the upper bound are the same as they were before. And in fact, the mean is also the same. However, the standard deviation is going to be different. It's going to be the standard deviation of um, the population divided by the square root of the sample size. So it's going to be the 500 divided by the square root of 13. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually, instead of finding out what that is, I'm just going to put it in my calculator. So I'm going to say normal CDF. And actually, you know what? I'm going to just use the last thing I did. And instead of 500, I'm going to put 500 divided by the square root of 13. Make sure you close the parentheses on the square root. There we go. So this is approximately 0.193. Okay. So 
And just remember, to do central limit theorem, you need to make sure two things are, um, one of two things are true. The sample size is greater than 30, or the population is normally distributed.